This one is for the, um, how shall I say it? Vertically challenged goalies. But y'all don't say that. Uh, and it's how you can play more like a six footer. Six foot two-er. Today I'm going to share with you my top three strategies that shorter goalies need to develop to maximize their potential on the ice and then stick around to the end because I am going to share a harsh truth with you and know that it's coming from a place of love. But first let's start with the strategies. Your first job is to maximize your abilities and your strengths. Too many of you I see, um, you know, you're, you're trying to get a post to post butterfly flare. And, and so you're spending so much time trying to work that hip internal rotation, trying to get a wide butterfly so that you can go post to post. So have a, you know, a skate on each post when you're in your butterfly, the way you see larger, taller goalies do that. You just don't have the anatomy. So, you know, if, if we look at a goalie that's five foot four and a goalie that's six feet tall, you know, there's, there's, let me do the math. Care the one. There's eight inches of difference there and that's distributed through the body. So, you know, unless you have like freakishly long tibias, you're not going to get that post to post internal rotation. So yes, for sure, maximize your butterfly flare, but don't obsess on getting that ingredient because it's an ingredient that really in all likelihood is definitely not in the cards for you. The same goes, you know, so then some of you think, well, okay, so now I, I need to do the splits to get post to post. You know, that's not a practical save selection. That's a desperation save. And so again, investing your time and energy, trying to get something that's really a desperation strategy, isn't going to be the best use of your time. Um, so that leads me to strategy number two and strategy two is really similar to strategy one, but don't try to be taller. Don't try to make yourself taller. Adding extreme blades to your skates is not going to make you six foot two. So it's going to add uh, more torque to your hip and knee and ankle, not going to make you six foot two. So let's just leave that out altogether. But your size definitely will change your depth management or your box control. And that is, you know, how big the net is behind you from the puck eye view. So it's not what the shooter sees, it's what the what the puck sees. So, and you guys know this, but you know, if the, if the puck is out here and I'm standing right here, well, there's very little net exposed behind me. If I'm back right on the goal line, well, then there's lots of open space that is apparent, that's visual to the puck. Not that the puck actually sees, although sometimes it feels like it does, but you know what I mean? So, you know, work with your goalie coach. There's lots of really good sort of art articles done up about when the puck's in different positions, what your depth should be. Um, USA Hockey actually has a, a really great, really simple, I think they, I can't remember, they might call it ABC or something like that, but if you just go to USA Hockey and look look for depth management, it's, it's in there. But uh, work with your goalie coach, study video, study film, YouTube, it's so easy to go in and look, hey, where does this guy stand or girl stand when the puck's in this position? What's their size? How how deep are they? How far out are they? What do I see in the difference between, you know, a six foot three goalie and, uh, you know, a five foot 11 goalie? NCAA is a great place to try and catch some of those goalies in action. And if you're going to be spending time learning about depth management and where you should be and when you're in this position, and how much of the net is exposed, then you darn well better be working on your agility and speed off the ice because you will have to cover a little bit more distance relative to the size of your body as a smaller goalie. But still, it's not an issue. It's not that a smaller goalie can't get strong enough or powerful enough. You know, the distances we're talking about moving, it's it's not like the pole vault or something. You know, it's, it's quick space. So any one of us has the capacity to push from, uh, you know, out of our butterfly into a T-push out to the top of the crease. We can all do that with the right training. And it's just a matter of being able to do that quicker and more efficiently. So you've got to learn your size relative to the net, your depth control, your box control, and then you have to have the speed and agility so you can efficiently move within those constructs. Huh? Move within those constructs. So you can efficiently move around the crease is basically what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to sound smart. 
And strategy three is be like Rudy. If you've seen the movie, I cry every single time. Uh, and, and it's because we want Rudy to succeed so bad. And Rudy's teammates want him to succeed. And even the coach comes around to want him to succeed because he's a smaller athlete who worked his ass off, who took his lumps and finally got his chance to prove himself. And he did it. So how does that re translate to you? You gotta work on your intangibles, which are being a team guy or gal, doing whatever you can to help the team win, being exceptionally coachable, being the one that, yeah, that the coaches really want to give you every benefit of the doubt possible. Your teammates want to see you get a chance. They're going to the coach even and saying, hey, why not give this guy or girl a chance? You also have to work on your tangibles. So stick handling, puck handling, uh, making that really good pass, hand-eye training so that, you know, you're, you're catching. None of those ones that get past your glove are because you just didn't have your glove in the right spot. These are all things that you can improve that you have control over. But the final thing is having an attitude uh, and a good attitude. I talked to some of you who, you know, well, because this guy's bigger, he's going to get all the chances. And, you know, because I'm small, the coach doesn't want to start me. You can't think like that. You have to constantly be thinking, what do I need to do? What's within my control to give myself more of a chance? And that leads to the harsh truth. So here's the harsh truth. And it is true that you are at a disadvantage as a shorter goalie. And that disadvantage gets more and more pronounced the higher the level. I really don't think it should matter at all when you're in high school, but it actually does. So what you need is you need to be better than them. You can't be as good. There are many coaches, unless the other guy's a jerk, there are many coaches that are going to have a six foot two goalie and a five foot eight goalie that are equal in terms of their ability or what the coach perceives as equal in terms of their ability. And the team's going to go and pick the five foot eight goalie over the six foot two goalie because coaches also think I can always teach this goalie to be better. I can always teach this goalie better technique, or he can always do the right off ice training for this goalie to make them quicker or more flexible or whatever it is they need. But they look at you and they think, I can't teach height. In fact, some NHL teams won't even look at a goalie unless they're, and I can't even remember, but it was like six foot one and three quarters. You know, unless you are there, they're not even gonna look at you. And I'm not saying that's right. And I think these things are on a pendulum. Uh, and that now, you know, especially as shooters are learning how to exploit goalies more, maybe there's gonna be a shift to a smaller, more agile um, and reactive, I guess, goalie for the lack of a better term. But right now, that's the way it is. So now's your chance. I've given you a few areas to work on. The number one thing I hear from smaller goalies that I work with in the Turning Pro Coaching Program in particular, because we work privately together, and, and really it's often after the first three or four weeks of, of doing the right training for them, is they tell me they can play with more patience because even just in that early days of improving their efficiency, their movement efficiency, which this has to do with mobility and stability and obviously strength and power, but you know, they can cover those distances and be set and ready for the shot. So now it's your turn to control what you can control. And if you're just like, man, I don't even know where to start. Probably check out, I have a playlist that's called the 10 Secret Habits of Pro Goalies. And it's here on my YouTube channel. So maybe check that out. I'll put a link in the description for you because there's a couple mobility workouts, there's a couple strength workouts, a couple speed and stamina workouts, and they're, they're short workouts. You don't need specialized equipment to do them. It's a great place to start. I'm not saying you're not gonna make it as a smaller goalie. I think this pendulum will shift at some point, but I am telling you truthfully and from a place of love, you are going to be at a disadvantage. Don't let it discourage you, but you really have to focus on controlling what you can control, improving what is gonna help you play better on the ice, 
and then surprise some people. There's nothing better than surprising some people. So that's it for today. Uh, why don't you tell me what you think is actually maybe the biggest um, hurdle to being a smaller goalie or what's the biggest benefit to being a smaller goalie? Plop that in the comments below. I'd be really interested to hear uh, what you think on that. Otherwise, I will catch you next time. Whoosh.